Today we're taking a look at the ultimate gaming phone, the Legion Phone Dual 2, and that's coming up right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter by clicking the links in the description. So today we've got the Legion Phone Dual 2 from Lenovo, a phone built 100% for gamers. It's a bit of a different design than the usual smartphone, but it's got some new features that I've never seen in a phone, as well as packing some impressive power. Now this is all thanks to the Snapdragon 888 system on chip, a whopping 18GB of DDR5 RAM and a 5500mAh power battery with 90 watt fast charge to run it. But before we get started, let me know down in the comments who out there likes to play mobile games on their smartphone, and if so, then what games do you play? But the first thing you'll notice about the Dual Phone 2 is just how wide the display actually is. They've made an ultra-wide 6.92 inch display, and this has an aspect ratio of 20.5 by 9 to try and give you the best gaming experience possible. The display has a resolution of 2460 by 1080 and it's a 144Hz refresh rate and a 720Hz touchscreen polling rate, so this is going to give you the edge over competitors. It's an 8-bit HDR10 Plus display with 1300 nits peak brightness and I have to say I never have the brightness anywhere near max when gaming. It's also protected by Gorilla Glass 5 to give you that extra peace of mind in case you do accidentally drop it. The Legion Dual 2 has been well thought out in delivering the features for gamers. We've got customizable RGB on the back, including RGB for the fans, and we've even got a motorized pop-out selfie camera, and it can also video you and remove the background for those of you that want to live stream from your phone. We've got two USB Type-C ports, so if you want to play while charging, it doesn't matter if you need that landscape or portrait, it's never going to be in the way. We've also got a new Octa Trigger setup that gives you additional buttons all around the phone, and this gives you a true console controller-like experience without the need for additional accessories. There's even a highlight recording option for gamers, and best of all, there is a special Legion toolbar that makes it quick and easy to activate everything, including checking our performance and stats. So we're going to start by taking a look at the octa-core trigger system and this gives us eight new buttons with some simple solutions as well as more inventive ones. We've got L1 and R1 on the tops and these are capacitive touchscreen top shoulder buttons and normally used for aiming and firing. There's even an adjustment that lets you choose the force so you can choose how hard you actually have to press to activate these buttons. It's the same for L2 and R2 which are located slightly behind those and the haptic feedback really makes these feel like actual buttons and I was actually surprised by how good these feel. The Legion actually has dual haptics with a vibration motor in the bottom left and the bottom right corner by your hands and this makes sure you feel the vibrations as best as possible. Now it does add a little bit more immersion that you don't normally get and I think it is a good idea. This is also helped with semi-real vibrations that's enabled for certain games and at the moment there's only a few supported but I hope to see the list grow. Now the shoulder buttons are a great idea, they help massively in games and the only thing here is while L1 and R1 are very easy to press, I find L2 and R2 that little bit harder to use but it gets easier the more you play. Now we've also got M1 and M2 capacitive keys on the back of the phone which are a great idea but unfortunately they just haven't been working for me. When set to swipe they do work and I can swipe them and they activate but in tap mode I tap them and it just doesn't recognize my taps so I'm hoping this is just an issue with my phone. Now when playing games, whether it be PUBG, Knives Out, Fortnite or Call of Duty, the additional buttons really do help. I've always struggled with these sort of games as I don't have the additional shoulder buttons and now I can finally understand how people can play them. The ability it gives you to move your character, look where you want and then aim and shoot is just incredibly helpful. The fact that the shoulder buttons are also so responsive, it also makes them incredibly comfortable to game with. Now another positive about the Dual 2 is its great front facing stereo speakers, we get great sounding audio from the game and in terms of audio quality it's great and better than most other smartphones out there. It also supports Bluetooth low energy audio to give you the low latency audio if you do prefer to use TWS earbuds. Now, 
Now when it comes to gaming, it of course handles everything you throw at it thanks to the Snapdragon 888 system on chip. When playing games, we've got the Legion toolbar that's easily accessible and this shows us stats from the games as well as our phone resources and it gives us a quick launch to many options. We've got a Rampage mode which is basically a one-click ultimate performance mode that's going to crank up performance and the fans to give you the best gaming experience possible. The Dual 2 features the world's first built-in twin turbo fan cooling system where two fans work together in a push-pull system and this is to force cool air through a copper wind tunnel which is then connected to a large vapour chamber via two pillars and it allows for great thermoregulation. Now when it comes to smartphone, the secret to keeping the chipset running fast is of course to stop it from overheating and this is somewhere where the Dual 2 shines. The cooling when the fan is activated does make a little bit of noise but it's nothing too loud and you can't hear it over the game sounds. So far, every game I've played on the Legion 2 is able to play at the max supported frame rate in the highest detail, even the games that support the full 144Hz. It's great not to have to worry about game performance and just put everything on full and then have the tools at your fingertips to check the performance. You can also set the phone to run at 60 or 90Hz when using normally and then it will automatically change to 144Hz when a game is being played. Now the Legion Assistant shows us the Wi-Fi signal strength and the cellular signal strength. Below that we've got easy access to a brightness slider and this makes changing brightness in game easier than ever. We can see the CPU and the GPU current clock speeds and of course boost them to max using the Rampage button if you want to start some serious gaming. We've got the FPS counter above that with the current temperature to the right and this is followed by the volume slider and plenty of shortcuts. Now Turbo Fan lets you turn on the fan and either have it in quiet mode, high speed, auto or completely off. The Y triggers allows you to set up the Octa Trigger system we covered earlier and the great thing is it remembers it for that game so when you load up the game next time it's all going to be there but if you change to a new game you can set specific controls for that one. So you just enable the buttons you want, choose single press, multi press or even a swipe and then you place them over the on screen buttons you want them to activate. Next up we have stream mode that lets you live stream from your phone either to YouTube or Twitch and you can activate the motorized 44 megapixel front facing camera to film you. Now there's a surprising amount of customizations for the camera including AR effects like hats, masks and butterflies and you can even have AR emojis that are going to copy everything you do for those of you that don't want to show yourself at all. You can also have the background removal to overlay you onto a game without a background. Now this does work but there's also a little bit of cutout which seems to change as you move. It does work in low light but as you can see here there is a bit of motion there that could be distracting. Nevertheless, it is a great option to have and something that I do hope improves with software. Now the video view can also be placed anywhere on the screen and once you're happy with the setup you can lock it into position so it doesn't accidentally get pressed while you're gaming. Now to be fair, this selfie camera does perform well even in the low light conditions. Now Visuals Plus gives us some preset display settings so we can find the one that suits the game best, whether that be for a better looking game or to help spot the enemies. We've got a RAM cleaner that's going to get rid of everything stored in the memory apart from what we need. A great feature but we probably don't need to worry about that considering the large amounts of memory on this phone. We've got the bypass charge which is a great feature and actually makes the phone run off the power cable exclusively and it doesn't touch the phone's battery. Now this avoids additional heat generated through charging and draining that could well impact on gaming and of course that will also do wonders for your battery life. Now we've also got force touch where we can enable the extra screen buttons we covered earlier. We've got realistic vibration if the game supports it. Shadow record if you want to be able to record certain clips of gameplay after it's happened. So press the button to record the previous 15 seconds. Now WhatsApp, no calls and no notifications if you don't want to be disturbed while gaming. And the great thing about the Legion Assistant is that it also works in both portrait and landscape modes. Now another interesting feature they've included are two separate USB ports on the phone so if you want to play while plugged in it doesn't matter if you're in portrait or landscape because there's a charging port to suit. 
The smartphone also has two batteries inside it, which not only gives a huge 5,500 milliamp hour battery, but it also gives even weight distribution while gaming. The phone has a battery on this side and a battery on that side, so it just makes it much nicer to hold. It also having two batteries, it's got a 90 watt dual fast charging, and this can charge 4,500 milliamp hours in just 17 minutes. With the standard 65 watt single charge, we get 50% charge in 13 minutes, and the full charge is 30 minutes which is still pretty impressive. Every gamer loves RGB so Legion have built this in to the Dual Phone 2 with plenty of customization. For a start you can choose different effects for games, music, calls and notifications, charging, lighting up with the screen and even have a fan RGB as well. Now the first option is a filling effect where you can choose a single color and have it fill. You can have carousel which basically is a rainbow effect that scrolls through all the colors. We've got a breathing effect where we can have either a breathing in just one color or select a color for the bottom and the top. There's a spin that simply spins the colors around but for some reason it does not let you select the color. And then finally we've got spring where it's going to fill between two colors you select and you can also have it play to music. Now synthetic benchmarks aren't for everyone, but for those of you that do care about the numbers, I ran the phone through Geekbench 5, and in Geekbench 5 we get a single core score of 1125 and a multi-core score of 3678. Now of course this is more than just a gaming device, it's also a phone and a camera. If we start with the cameras, we've got a 44 megapixel wide angle selfie camera and this has an 84 degree field of view and an aperture of f2.0. On the rear we've got a 64 megapixel wide angle with an 82 degree field of view and an aperture of f1.9 and then finally we've got a 16 megapixel ultra wide with a 120 degree field of view and an aperture of f2.2. We get all of the usual shooting modes and when it comes to video we get 8K at 24 frames a second, 4K at 60 or 30, 1080p at 60 or 30 and 720p we can choose 240 frames at 120, 60 or 30. Now first of all the photos, overall I took plenty of nice photos with a good amount of detail and to be honest the camera as a whole is fine. It's nowhere near the best smartphone camera I've seen but it's certainly not the worst and let's not forget this is a gaming phone. The wide angle captures a lot more detail than the ultra wide as you would expect given the difference in sensors but something I found a little bit frustrating was the oversaturation of the ultra wide. As you can see when I took a shot of the same scene with the wide followed by the ultra wide there's a huge difference in color. I hope this is something that they fix with the software update but I also imagine it's something that you could have success with different camera apps but the tree image shows this off the best where the wide angle is probably a little flatter than it was in real life then the ultra wide is incredibly oversaturated and causing a loss of even more detail. As I said though, it's perfectly satisfactory and to be honest, it's what I expected from a gaming phone. When it comes to the portrait shots, again, they're fine. They blur out the background and do a fairly good job at keeping the subject in focus with some reasonable edge detection. When given harder edges, it does struggle that little bit more, but overall, it's doing a reasonable job. When it comes to the night sight, we're restricted to the 64 megapixel wide angle camera and it does increase the vision, but it doesn't perform the best here. I don't want to be too harsh as it's bringing out things in the image that I couldn't see with my own eye, but it is at the cost of a lot of detail. At the same time, it is doing what it's meant to do and it's doing it better than some other phones, but it's just not as good as say the Google Pixel. Now onto the video, we first have the 8K sample at 24 frames a second and we do have plenty of detail and good lighting but there's pretty much no stabilization. This was taking while walking and it's pretty much as I expected but also dropping to that 24 frames per second also does give it that jaggedness. Now next up we've got the 4K at 60 frames a second and again plenty of detail but little to no stabilization. One thing I did notice in the video was that if you had something reasonably close it was fine to film but then straight ahead with too much open space it would often lose focus and begin searching. This became a lot more apparent in the 1080p clip you see here of an open field. It would search for focus if my focal point was selected too far in the distance but one thing you can see however is that the stabilization is far better in 1080p and that's usually the case having more allowances for cropping. 
Now the selfie camera gave a reasonable result with the sun shining directly at me but plenty of detail and actually the audio comes out well. The wind was relatively heavy and only a few times could you actually hear that but we're just going to listen to the audio samples now. Now this is video from the front facing camera and it's a little bit awkward with this one just because of the way you hold it with the camera coming out of the side sort of makes you want to turn it round but this gives you an idea of what it's going to look like and what the audio quality is going to be like as well. So one thing to also mention is that with the selfie camera being where it is, it pops out and it's great for landscape selfies but it's not so good for portrait. It's fine but it's just in a little bit of an awkward place to hold and then after you've been so used to looking at the top of your phone for all these years, you now have to look to the right hand side to the middle. It also makes it that little bit harder to align the shot properly while looking at the camera but again it's a pro and a con it actually makes it much easier than other smartphones to take landscape selfies. Now the phone sounds great for phone calls and with a good quality mic you know others can hear you perfectly as well. We've also got 5G support which includes both sub 6 GHz and millimeter wave. We also get dual SIM support for those of you that need it. Overall though the phone is good for general use and as you'd have guessed thanks to the hardware it's smooth and snappy and there's also plenty of customization. There's a light mode and a dark mode and you can actually choose to automatically switch between the two depending on time. We've got DC dimming and nightlight mode for those of you who need it but to be honest visual fatigue isn't something I've ever suffered with so I can't comment too much here. We can select the fresh rate of the display and we can choose between 144, 120, 90 or 60 hertz. We can also have the settings so games automatically load at 144. We've got all of the RGB customizations we covered earlier and Legion OS 12.5 is based on Android 11 so it's got all of those features you'd expect. The software hasn't changed too much apart from adding their logo into the enable disable slider bars and while I often do dislike people's overlays on top of Android I feel they're isn't too much bloat here and the additional apps are all based on the gaming aspect which does make sense. There's an in-display fingerprint scanner but whereas with other phones you can use it at all times even when the screen's off, that doesn't seem to be the case on the Legion 2. You have to press the power button first and then it will allow you to use the in-display fingerprint scanner so that's a little bit annoying as it adds more time to unlock but it does unlock quickly from that point and it seems to work pretty well. So it feels great to hold when gaming thanks to the evenly distributed weight but another downside here is it sort of makes it feel a little bit top heavy when using it one handed with the weight of the battery up at the top. And another point one handed use is also a little bit harder than usual given the very wide screen it makes it a big reach if you're looking for things at the top. For those that want to watch media though it's also great with a bright and vibrant screen and also the great sounding audio makes it a pleasure. When it comes to the packaging it comes in a nice sleek box with the Legion logo. We've got an inventive opening that reveals the phone along with the rest of its contents. Now first up we get the power brick. Now this can charge up to 20 volts at 3.25 amps which makes it 65 watts so not bad for a package power brick considering a few companies have now stopped providing them altogether. We then get a USB-C to USB-C cable, another one for dual charging, the SIM ejector tool, a protective case, a 3.5 millimeter to USB-C dongle followed by the instructions. While it hasn't got the best photography it's clearly aimed at gamers and overall it is great for media and gaming. If you're after a phone primarily for gaming then it's a great choice. If you also want to browse the web, stream content as well as using any other apps you throw at it then it's also a great choice. So overall it is worth considering unless as well as gaming photography is a high priority for you and of course the links to purchase this are down in the description below. So hopefully that is everything covered now but if there's anything I've missed or you've got any questions then just leave them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thank you for watching the video, if you liked it smash a thumbs up, if you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.